All right, thanks, guys. The Cavaliers take on the Clippers. 3.30 Eastern tip-off at the Staples Center. The Clippers open the betting as the 10-point favorite total at 3.30. And since those markets opened this one up, we're actually seeing a slight fade of the Clippers when it comes to the spread. We're also seeing a little movement downward on the total as well. Minus 9.5 and, and 2.28. So once again, Los Angeles open minus 10, down to minus 9.5. Total open 2.28.5, down to 2.28 even. 64% of the consensus is leaning toward Los Angeles. 51% of the consensus is shaded toward the under. And at the moment, the Cavaliers are plus 400 on the money line. Now, Henson and Del Vadova are still out indefinitely for the Cavs. Meanwhile, for the Clippers, Danilo Gallinari and Patrick, uh, Patrick Beverly are questionable for the Clips. Uh, L.A. still 11-4 against the number in their last 15. And they're also 6-3 ATS in their last nine at home. 8-1 straight up in those same nine games. They rank second in home three-point shooting as well. Now, Cleveland on the uh, other side, no real surprise here. They rank dead last in road defensive field goal percentage. Uh, they've also won just six out of 31 straight up away from home this year. Now, total-wise, Cleveland's 5-1 to the under in their last six, taking on the Clippers. Give me the L.A. Clips, minus nine after buying the hook, and the under 228 in that matchup there. All right, guys, just want to take a quick time out and welcome you to the show. Happy Saturday to you. Got some lines and personal leans out for Saturday's NBA, college basketball, NHL, and MLB action. Huge jam-packed show. And that's why I actually uh, uploaded the full show yesterday at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. Thinking about doing that again today, what that really does is give you an opportunity to interact in a live chat setting uh, with myself and other uh, other subscribers that you guys been interacting with uh, in the comment section. Well, this time it's live, so uh, I should be able to join you guys. I did join uh, last night and had a great conversation with a bunch of guys in the chat box live. Um, but yeah, I, I might be able to get to it tonight if I am. Feel free to drop me a line. Uh, I'm very, uh, very open. I find my subscribers and their opinions very, very uh, interesting. And I love interacting with you guys. And actually uh, had a conversation in Spanish last night uh, in that chat box. So anyway, check me out uh, tonight. We're going to uh, premiere the full show at 6.30. I may be on to chat with you, maybe not. Uh, you'll have to find out and uh, tune in at 6.30. But essentially, it's the full show, not broken up into bits and pieces um, so I'll see you then. I also want to remind you to check me out at patreon.com slash Brock page. That is my website. And I'll tell you what, we're off to a hot start in the MLB, uh, last four MLB picks. Uh, we have three wins and one, no decision. Uh, looked like that was a, a, a nice win on Estrada yesterday for the A's. And, uh, he left the game after six innings of shutout ball. And the uh, A's bullpen threw up all over themselves. But anyway, hot start, 3-0-1 in our first four picks for MLB. Plenty more where that came from. Check me out at patreon.com slash Brock Page. Plenty of free content there. Link for that website is in the description section below. All right, let's go ahead and get into some picks. That's what we're here for. Let's go ahead and take a look at some lines and personal leans. Once again, all starts Eastern Standard Time. And on deck, we've got Celtics, Nets, 6 o'clock Eastern tip-off in Brooklyn. <clears throat> now, we saw a flip of the lines in this matchup here. Brooklyn open as the one and, excuse me, one and a half point dog with the total at 228 and a half. Whole bunch of movement in this one. Uh, we're seeing movement toward Brooklyn when it comes to the spread. We're also seeing movement downward on the total as well. Two and a half point move toward the under. So right now Brooklyn's minus one and a half total down to 226. Let's go ahead and recap that one more time. The Nets open plus one and a half, now minus one and a half. Total open 228 and a hook down to 226. Boston's minus 105 on the money line. Now, Al Horford is questionable for the Celtics tonight. Meanwhile, for Brooklyn, Alan Crabb is listed as questionable as well. The Nets are just 2-5 of five straight up in their last seven. They've also really just been getting pounded by Boston in the past couple of seasons. They're just 1-11 and 11 straight up in their last dozen taking on Boston. Now, Brooklyn uh, ranks 25th in defensive rebounding and 24th in offensive field goal percentage. 
Now, Boston on the other side, they're third from the stripe. Their opponents are shooting just 44% from the field. When it comes to the total, Boston is 4-1 to the under in their last five, taking on Brooklyn. The Nets are 3-0 to the under, taking on Boston this season. So with all that said and done, I'm going to lean toward the road dog in this one. I'm also going to purchase the hook, slide it up, and take Boston plus two in the under 226 in that matchup there. Next game, Kings. Rockets, 6 o'clock at the Toyota Center. Houston open 10.5, total 228 in the hook. A lot of action on this game. We're not seeing a whole lot of movement. Uh, we're seeing pretty good two-way action on both the spread and the total. Spread remains 10.5, total moved up to 229. So once again, Houston open then remains minus 10.5, total open 228.5, up to 229. 60% are leaning Houston, 65% shaded toward the over. Right now, the Kings are plus 440 on the money line. Now, if you like the Kings in this matchup here, they do rank fifth in the NBA in road scoring. They also rank fourth in shooting the three ball. They're 5-4 and four against the number in their last nine. And they also rank fourth in defending the three ball. Now, Houston on the other side, they rank 27th in offensive field goal percentage. They're shooting just 44% from the field. They're also ranking 28th in offensive rebounding and 23rd in defensive field goal percentage as well. Now, total-wise, Houston's 8-1 to the under in their last nine, 5-0 to the under in their last five at home. Give me Sacramento plus 11 after buying the half a point in the under 229 in that matchup there. Next game, Blazers, Pistons. And that is going to be a 7 o'clock tip-off in Detroit. The Pistons open minus 5, total 215 and a half. We're seeing movement upward on the spread and downward on the total. Minus 5 and a half and 215. So once again, Detroit open minus 5, up to minus 5 and a half. Total open 215 and a half, down to 215 even. 57% are leaning Portland. 80% uh, shaded toward the over. Right now the Blazers are plus 200 on the money line. Now, Portland is 9-1 straight up in their last 10, 6-4 against a number in that same category. They're 10-2 ATS in their last dozen on the road, and they rank second in offensive rebounding. Now, Detroit ranks second to last in offensive field goal percentage. They're also 25th in defensive field goal percentage as well, 47.1% in that category there. They're also just 2-4 straight up in their last six. Now, total-wise, Detroit's 5-2 and two to the over in their last seven. Portland, 4-1 to the over in their last five. I'm going to purchase the hook, buy it up, and take Portland plus six in the over 215 in that matchup there. Next game, Magic Pacers. That's going to be a 7 o'clock Eastern tip-off in Indiana. Uh, Indiana open minus three, total 205. We're seeing a slight fade of Indiana and movement toward the under. Two and a half and 204 and a hook. Once again, Indiana open minus three, down to minus two and a half. Total open 205, down to 204 and a hook. 57% are leaning Indiana, 75% shaded toward the over. Right now, the Magic plus 115 on the money line. Orlando's just one and five straight up in their last six away from home. They failed to cover in five out of those six games. They also ranked 27th out of 30 teams in road scoring. They're 27th in road field goal percentage as well. And they've covered just eight out of their last 20 games at the current point spread. Indiana on the other side, very, very good against the number in their second of a back-to-back. -back. They're 9-4 ATS in their second of a back-to-back. -back. They're also 15-7 against the spread, taking on teams between 450 and 550. When it comes to the total, Indiana's 4-1 to the over in their last five at home, taking on Orlando. If you're into historical trends, Orlando, two out of their last four got over the number as well. Give me Indiana minus two after buying the half a point in the over 204 and a half in that matchup there. Next game, Heat, Knicks, 730 Eastern tip off at Madison Square Garden. The Heat open five and a half total 209. Uh, not a whole lot of movement on the total, although we did see a full one point move toward the Heat. They're now minus six and a half. So once again, Miami open five and a half, up to minus six and a half. Totals 209. 67% are leaning Miami, 55% shaded toward the over. Right now, the Knicks are plus 245 on the money line. Now, Winslow, Richardson, and Magruder are all out for the Heat tonight. Meanwhile, on the other side, we have Von Ley and Trier listed as out for the Knicks. This is a really big number on the road for Miami. 
with all those key players out, I really don't know. I'm very, very confused as to what is going on with this line. But what I do know uh, is that the Knicks rank dead last in offensive field goal percentage. They just can't put the ball in the cup. They also rank 28th in scoring in Miami on the other side. They're second in road points allowed. They're also third in road defensive field goal percentage. Uh, they rank fifth in road defensive rebounding as well. So I don't even know if the Knicks are going to be able to score uh, points tonight. Now, oddly enough, Miami's 3-3 three and three to the over in their last six, and the Knicks are 4-2 and two to the over in their last six themselves. So I got to lean Miami, even though they got some key players out. I got to go Miami on the road, minus six after buying the hook, and the over 209 in that matchup there. Next game, Raptors, Bulls, 8 o'clock in Chicago. Toronto open minus 11, total 219. A lot of movement in this one. Uh, we're seeing a steady and consistent fate of Toronto against the spread. We're also seeing a four-point move downward on the total, down to 215. So once again, the Raptors open 11, down to minus 10. Total open 219, down to 215. 74%. Leaning toward Toronto, 51% shaded toward the over. Right now, Chicago's plus 450 on the money line. Uh, Otto Porter's out. Zach Levine's doubtful. Chris Dunn is doubtful. All for Chicago. And for those who don't know, Chicago's got a whole slew of guys who uh, have been out for the season. Uh, Valentine, Market, and Hutchison Carter. They've been all out for the season. So even though it's not an impressive uh, group of starters and role players, I mean, that's the core group of Chicago. Um, you know, all those guys. So who knows what kind of product Chicago is going to be able to put on the court tonight. Uh, what I do know is that they're 2-8 and eight, uh, straight up in their last 10. They've also failed to cover in four out of their last five at home, and they rank second to last in home scoring. Uh, Total-wise, Chicago is 6-3 and three to the over in their last nine, uh, obviously giving up a bunch of points and markets over-adjusting. Uh, Toronto 7-3 to the over in their last 10. I'm going to lean Raptors minus 10 in the over 215 in that matchup there. Next game, Sixers. T-Wolves, 8 o'clock in Minnesota. The Sixers open minus 5, total 231. We're seeing half point fade of the Sixers and a two-point move downward on the total. 4.5 and, and 229. Once again, the Sixers open minus 5, down to minus 4.5. Total open 231, down to 229. 68% are leaning Philly, 62% shaded toward the over. Right now, Minnesota's plus 160 on the money line. Uh, Joel Embiid out for tonight's action. Uh, Ennis is questionable for the Sixers as well. Meanwhile, on the other side, Taj Gibson is doubtful for the Timberwolves. Now, Minnesota 7-2 straight up in their last night at home. Very good at home this year. They're also 6-3 against the spread in their last night at home as well. Uh, Minnesota, not bad in the second of a back-to-back -back either. 6-5 and five against the number in their second of a back-to-back. They're covering 63% of their games as the official home underdog, and they rank fifth in home offensive rebounding. Now, Philly on the other side, they're 24th in road three-point shooting. They're also 20th in road scoring, and they failed to cover in three out of their last four games. Now, total-wise, Minnesota's 5-2 and two to the under in their last seven. Give me the T-Wolves plus five after buying the half a point, covering the spread at home, and the under 229 in that matchup there. All right, next and final game for the show, it is going to be, did I skip? No, I have it here. Uh, Grizzlies, Suns, 10 o'clock Eastern tip-off in the Desert Talking Stick Resort Arena in Phoenix. Uh, flip of the lines in this one, Memphis open plus one, up to minus two. Uh, total open 220, up to 220 and a half. 65% are leaning Memphis, 66% shaded toward the over. Right now, the Suns are plus 110 on the uh, money line. Don't want to get too far into the specifics in this one. I like Memphis minus two and the under 220 and a half in that matchup there. All right, let's go ahead and slide into some March Madness. And we're going to begin with Texas Tech taking on Gonzaga. 609 Eastern tip off at the Honda Center. Gonzaga open four and a half, total 139 and a hook. And since it was 